Hey guys, it's Miron from Speak of the Stars and welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing a bit of a watercolorish or it's still kind of watercolorish piece. Yes, it's a long video. I know it's hitting 20 plus minutes already. Um, this is just mainly because I did a lot of pauses in the video. I'll go into that a bit more later. And yes, my voice is pretty hoarse. I am still having a bit of a cold, so I am starting to recover from it already. Uh, I'm not as sick as before. Also, I hope you don't really hear the rain outside right now. It's raining kind of hard. And this is a new mic, so I don't really know if it will pick that up or not. But either way, if you do hear it, kindly bear with it for while it rains. <laughs> it's currently 12 a.m. I work in a couple of hours. I need to go to sleep, but here I am. <laughs> Again, coming. Yes, I know I'm late. Oh gosh, I have so many disclaimers. Ugh, I really shouldn't have done this. Yes, I know it's a late video again. I've actually done the- I actually had the finished product. Or finished piece. Oh, I had the finished piece done by Wednesday. Um, except when I imported all of the video clips, it was over a span of two or three days of drawing. And I really didn't want to deal with that long edit, so I ended up playing Monster Hunter. Yeah, I did that. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so I actually saw a couple of new people subscribe if you're watching this video. Hello, welcome. I'll take this really long video a chat as a chance to introduce myself. I'm Veron. I do mostly anime-ish style drawings. Um, I do mostly watercolors. I do fan art. So the most common fan art you'd find on my channel would be Fate right now at least. There's a couple of Persona stuff. Um, I have some Vocaloid stuff that I'm not as into it anymore. And other than that, it will be original characters. I do I do slide in some different content every now and then like uh, character designing or tips to improve or tips you know to get into drawing and stuff like that. But mostly I'm just a girl that just wants to draw and I just record while I record while I draw and I just happen to have skills in video editing somewhat so here we are. <laughs> okay, let's get into the video I guess. So this piece isn't anything it usually isn't much. It's just something that I thought up of. Uh, it's not any original character, it's not fan art, it's just a thing. So the video is long because I I did cut out a good part of it, but I went to through through two stages of sketching. So that was the colored pencil sketch, which is what you saw in the very beginning, which is just the basic lines. And then I went it with lead pencil to create details and stuff like that. I am doing lining right now. And I'm also doing two stages of lining, mainly because I'm using a fine liner and I wanted to create more depth and weight to the piece. So I did the basic line and then I go over it with a thicker line art pen or a thicker pen, which is what you see right now, to create mm, you know more more variety in it. Also, yeah, the, the materials I'm using actually do take a lot of time. So I'm using the Derwent Intense Pencils in this one. It's been a while since I used them. I'm still slightly kind of pretty much intimidated by them, so I decided to play around with them today. I also slide in a little bit of watercolor for more wider areas that I don't really want to use my colored pencils on. And yes, if you've been a long time, or if you've been watching my channel for a couple of months by now, you may have noticed that I always say I'm a little bit of a purist in terms of materials. And I say that in the way that once I start using watercolors, I tend not to mix other mediums. I don't like switching to a different medium just because it's not like I hate it. It's just that if I switch materials, I get broken from the flow, I guess. So if I tend to use watercolors, I want to do it all the way. If I use colored pencils, I do, I'll do it all the way, etc, etc, etc. So it's pretty rare to see me mix stuff. Just because, I guess it's inconvenient. <laughs> That's the best explanation I can really give. Um, but today, 
this is a piece that I don't really have much of a plan for. Uh, I sketched it out because I thought, okay, uh, I sketched it out because last week's video was a stock up video, and I thought I should do something. It's been a while. I don't know what to draw. I drew a post, and I thought, hey, I want to draw a knight, so I did that. And if you if Again, you've been watching my video since last year, I guess. You know that I like drawing cloth and playing with like flowy cloth, so I slapped that in there. And you have my typical themes. Knights, cloth, watercolor. That's essentially my channel. I should That should be my tagline, to be honest. Anyway, um, so I just did a sketch. It was like one sketch. And the rest was YOLO. <laughs> that's that piece, it's that kind of piece. Despite me saying that, or having a video on thumbnails and saying that you should sketch before you draw, which I did, and you should thumbnail and you should plan out your colors and stuff like that before you draw so that you don't get as disappointed with your final product, I don't always do that myself either. And that's fine as well. I mean, uh, for some people that works the best, like doing planning first, for some people, it helps. For some people, it just messes them up. So it depends on what kind of artist you are. Uh, I actually do go into that a little bit on the thumbnailing video or the sketchbook video, which either either or. And for me, it just so happens that I like sketching before I draw the final piece. Um, also because that's what I was taught in a class. But for this piece, it was more of a free-flowing we'll see what looks good together kind of piece. So, I did this, the line art, and then I thought, what do I want to do with this? I've been doing watercolor a lot, so I feel like I should switch things up a little bit. But also, this a big can it's a, it's a bigger canvas, it's, a, it's one of my bigger pads. So I didn't really want to use colored pencils, because it's going to get all used up on this piece. So I slid over to the materials and I saw my ink pens. And I mentioned that I am slightly the kind of intimidated by them. That's mainly because they're ink. They're essentially uh, water-soluble ink. But once this thing dries, it doesn't really move that much. Unlike with watercolor, I can still kind of... Uh, at the risk of um, filling the paper or damaging the paper, you can still kind of rub it off a little bit in the in this Canson pad. You can do that reasonably well because of um, the the layer on top of it. I won't go into that that much. But anyway, the Canson pad is pretty good for removing pigment, I guess. But with ink tents, the moment they dry, that's pretty much it. It will still move a little bit because it's colored pencils. It's, there's gonna be like pot patches of ink that's still not fully diluted, or it didn't melt. But still, you know, it, you know, because with watercolor, people don't like it because it's you know, you can't make that much, much that much mistakes. Blah. <laughs> you can't do this or it's too like this or something like that. But with ink pens, gosh, eh. I felt that with ink pens. I didn't feel it with watercolors that much, but I felt it with the ink pens. So I thought, you know, I'm just gonna go in and use them and be careful. <laughs> That's the only thing I thought about. So in terms of the colors, I... Yeah, it's, it's whatever goes well together. <laughs> Even the skin tone. I think you saw that I started out with the lighter skin tone. And I think because I was... Um, somewhat influenced by Fate Grand Order. So as of the time of recording, the Agartha chapter released I think two or three weeks ago. So one of the servants there, the cast of the Night of the City, if you haven't watched, uh, played it, um, is a slightly darker skin toned lady, or it's a darker skin toned lady. And then also in Japan, the Indian Lost Belt also dropped, so there are slight um, more darker, deeper skin tone servants there, or characters. So, I've been on Reddit just to get that, so I think I got influenced in terms of skin tone. But uh, it's fine because I've always been kind of scared of deeper skin tones. Um, most, no, all of my characters rather have lighter skin tones, they're slightly fair, 
or more tannish. Um, I don't really have anyone with a dark skin tone. Um, chalk it up to youth and or being influenced by anime and or cultural yada yada. But I just don't have any. And I think also because I'm kind of scared of screwing up. So darker skin tones, um, there are also like cool tones and warm tones and all of that. But I feel like I could screw it up a, li- a lot more easily. Like I could, I could go too dark and lose definition much, much faster than I would with lighter skin tones. And yeah, I, I kind of resolved that I had a resolution, resolution last year, I believe, when I got the Prima Confections watercolors, that I wanted to do a more varied skin tone um, portfolio or or you know just have more bright skin tones that isn't a light colored lady or guy or whatever and this was the day I decided to do it <laughs> which is funny because um, generally people would, ad- would advise that if you're gonna try something new or if you're gonna play around a little bit you might want to do something familiar and then add in that new thing or material or technique or whatever so that you're not as intimidated by it or you're not you won't feel like you completely failed and that's a really really good advice except there are days when i feel really gutsy and ballsy and i would take on two challenges at the same time and usually they actually do turn out pretty well um i just you know it's just not always the best idea i guess So in this case, I'm using the ink pens, which I did say I'm intimidated about, or intimidated of, and I also did scar- darker skin tones, which I also said I'm kind of intimidated of doing. Woo! <laughs> Courage! Woo! Amazing! <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. So in terms of the colors, I can't really say much about it. I just chose colors that I think would work well together, and because I like teal and blue, it's my it's a color it's a color that I tend to bias towards. I use teal instead to give it a bit more variety than usual, and then I chose gold for the lining and stuff. And I thought, hey, like a magenta would look good with this, so I added that in the hair color. I was thinking, like, would it be weird to have? the like blue hair or, or would it look good with, with the darker skin tone. I could go blonde but I have a lot of golds. I didn't want to go that dude. I thought like would the gold might be reddish or pinkish but as you see the cape I was planning to make that the magenta that's on the gem. So I decided to go with darker hair instead so that also matches with his shirt a little bit and his boots, shoes, whatever. Man. So I'm gonna. I don't know actually, it's worth, we're, th- we're at 30 minutes, minutes already. So um, you know that my voice is still a little bit wrecked from the cold. So I might leave you music at some point. But as long as I have things to say, I won't stop. <laughs> so by this point, you're probably in it for the long haul. But thanks for staying, I guess. Yeah. Um, I hope that you enjoy this. I'm just, you know chilling around, drawing. This isn't really a... I didn't really have much of a goal for this piece. I just wanted to do something with it. Mainly because I had been in MH for the past two or three weeks by now. I still am. I still play with my friends. And we're not anywhere near done with the game. So... Mm. Alright, I do have something to talk about. Um, if you're not familiar or if you don't care about Fate Grand Order, feel free to just keep on watching the video. But if you are, and I do talk about FGO a lot on my channel just so you know, <laughs> but if you are, um, today was the day that the GSSR banner released so that's where you can grab any limited 5 star servant or character. And I pulled hoping to get Merlin. And my only condition was I would get anyone that was a duplicate. And that was, that's pretty it's a pretty wide 
oh no, actually I have 13 SSRs, so um, out of what is it, 50-ish SSRs by now, so I thought I had a pretty good chance of drawing someone that isn't a duplicate. Like, I mean, if I got Merlin, I'd be ecstatic. Or if I got a different character, like say Weaver or Karna or Musashi or someone like that, I'd still be pretty happy. Unfortunately, I did livestream this on my Twitch, so if you follow me on Twitch, I did livestream this earlier. But unfortunately, I got Artoria Pandragon, Saber, Vanilla, Blue Saber. I've had Artoria Pendragon since day 5. Yes, I'm a day 1 NA player, but I've had Artoria Pendragon since day 5. And sure, she's not NP2, but I said, please no duplicates, and no other servant came. I got Kid Gil, I got... Um, what did I get? I forgot. I got some CEs, but I didn't get anyone else. And there goes my cash. <laughs> That's a really bad draw. Like, like my only hope for Merlin now would be the October milestone banner and New Year next year. So for now, I'll be drawing for summer maybe. Uh, I'll be also jo be drawing for the Sherlock Da Vinci banner. Um, I'm also aiming for Ereshkigal. What else? Is there anyone anyone else notable? I might drop some on Shimosa. But I'm not sure because Musashi couldn't be there, I think. And Raiko and Shuten. Shuten's my goal, actually. And Miyamoto. Uh, anyone else I should be washing out for? I'm not really sure. Yeah, I think those are gonna be more or less the ones that I'll be drawing for. Mainly Da Vinci, a drop of 30 on Summer, Ereshkigal, Merlin. Those are the goals. <sighs> Man. So yeah, that's what happened today. Me. <laughs> I'm so I'm so I'm kinda salty. I I, I, I brought up I released all of my salt in Monster Hunter World, but that was kinda sad. I mean I did say Draw, like, draw and do not hope, but that takes it too far, man. <laughs> so now we're doing the background. I wanted it to be very light so that it doesn't um, clash with the character. And I actually wanted to try this out. I actually did three, three things today. So I did the lighter skin tone, or like a darker skin tone, the ink tense pencils, and I also included like a more graphic -y background or it's not my usual background. Usually, I compose an entire scene. Like, if it's gonna be a forest, it's a forest. If it's gonna be um, a door or a window, it's gonna be a window. And my original intention was I wanted to do a door that's glass, that has like um, trees and stuff behind it. But I decided to do some graphic y, you know, fun things instead. Woo! So, what I'm doing now is I wanted to test how. Because so I wanted to make the edges darker, and I wanted to do that with the purple. But the purple did give some depth, but it didn't give me enough that darker look that I was looking for. So when I flipped that page over just now, I was testing how the colors would mix, what would happen if I put in the brown. And when I saw that it kind of blended well, even though it was still wet, I just went ahead with it. And it was exactly what I was looking for. It gave it some depth, it made it look a lot less pastel, even even though it still does look a little bit light, and it's, it's exactly what I was looking for. So that's actually another tip that a lot, a lot of um, YouTuber artists would give you. If you're going to do swatches, do it on the type of paper that you use the most. Um, with me, what I do sometimes is I leave a page, a single page in my sketchbook. For example, for this one, I have a single page there that, that would serve as like a mixing or a testing page for anything. So that's where I test how the microns would work, I test how um, glittery paint would work. In this case, I also used it to test how this these particular colors would layer over each other even when they're wet. So I suggest having that kind of page just for you know, accuracy, I guess, and so that you don't go in blind. And you don't disappoint yourself that much, I guess. Yeah. 
So all of my um, final work sketchbooks have that kind of page. Usually I use them to just test pens and stuff. But they're handy to have around. So I think by now you see why I did this video is so long. Um, I put in so many layers, so just the lighting alone, I put in the yellow, then I add another layer of magenta, and now I'm adding some gold paint just because I want it to be sparkly. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, alright, we still have this. So I did go in again to put in some put to put in some cross hatching. Um I don't know. I didn't I don't know why I did that. I think I just wanted it to have a bit more detail, I guess. I don't know. I don't know my decisions sometimes, to be honest. I just do them sometimes. Yeah. I don't think you'll see it that one in the video, but in the final piece, you'll see um, what it did for it. It just created some depth and some shadows. Right. <laughs> I, went, I got through the video without losing my voice entirely. Woo! Right, so we will be jumping into the preview right now. And... I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please consider liking or subscribing if you enjoyed. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I do watercolor and fan art. I drop some digital words in there sometimes. Um, right, so follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and art as well. And I will see you around.